what I have are a series of seven scans. No targets were used in these scans. This is simply setting up the scanner, telling it to scan, and then bringing it into scene software. I want to look at registration because there are a few ways we can do this. One is I can take all of these scans, right click on the scan folder, operation, registration, and I can tell it to place scans. Inside the place scan, you have three methods of doing this. A target based, using any of the targets that you had identified. Top view, which is the software analyzing essentially the structures that are there and lining the data up as best it can uh, within those, uh, those parameters. Where we're working inside, for example, and we have vertical walls and columns and features that don't change or don't move throughout the entire scene, the top view based is an easy way to get these to line up. We also have the ability to do a cloud to cloud where we're taking all of these overlapping points and best fitting the two point clouds together. Now a method that isn't in here is to manually do the alignment prior to using one of the automated. And I can do this by going to the view and into a correspondence view. Inside the correspondence view, I'll see all of the individual scans shown and each one is represented with a different color. I can highlight any of these scans and using the graphic that's given, I can rotate these by moving the uh, blue circle around or I can click on the crosshair here to move these into location. I can of course zoom and pan as I'm doing these. What I want to do is look at two other options. One, which is to go straight into the registration, play scans, and tell it to do a top view registration. So with the placement mode set to top view, the first thing I want to look at is the subsampling uh, of the points to use. As you slide the slider towards the low end or the high end, you're increasing or decreasing the subsampling point distance. When you're dealing with interior scans or scans where you have um, more data at shorter ranges, moving this to a lower value, uh, say here in the just around a tenth of a foot area, is adequate. Uh, when I'm outdoors or in a larger area, I like to take this to a higher area. When in doubt, you can always start just by setting the uh, by setting the sliders in the middle and running with those values. I know mine is outside, so I'm going to increase the uh, the subsampling area, and I'm going to keep the reliability of that data uh, for the registration right about midway. I'll hit OK, and then I'll let it do its process. The registration completes, and I get my registration report. The first thing I'm noticing is the uh, quality in, shown here in the stoplight will either be red, yellow, or green. Red's telling me something didn't go the way it was supposed to. So I look at the scan results, and I sort these individually from lowest to highest. And I'm seeing uh, here at the bottom a scan point tension of 0 0.044 for scan number seven. When I go into the scan point tensions and look at the overall average, I'm seeing a mean of 0 0.0758 with only 9.4% of the overlapping point within my tolerance. I don't like these numbers. These are too high for me. So I have a couple of options. I can either go back into the uh, cluster view and try to line these up a little bit more. I can come back here and play with the subsampling and reliability settings to get this to fit, or I can jump straight to a cloud to cloud. I'm going to use high subsampling around 25 hundredths of a foot, no more than 30 iterations and a maximum search distance of half a foot.
Now, with the cloud to cloud complete, we can come in and look at the scan results and sort these again from low to high and look at the mean tensions. And what I'm looking for here is a mean tension greater than 0 0.03 and the overall statistic, again, better than 0 0.03 and the percentage of overlapping point data used within my tolerance to be better than 50%. Here I'm at 0 0.0085 and 63.4% of the data being used. I like those numbers, so I okay that. Once my registration is complete, I can right click on the scan manager and lock it so that I can do nothing else to uh, to affect that registration. I also at this point like to go ahead and save and I give it a name. Okay, now let's say we went through all of that. We looked at the um, correspondence view and we did the cloud to cloud. We did all these things and we couldn't make it register. Or let's say we have freestyle data or a scan of a small area and we want to tie these different data types together. The easiest way to do this is to do a split correspondence view. What the split correspondence view allows me to do is to load a scan into each of the two areas. So I can take scan one and drop it here and scan two and drop it here. Okay, and then I like to line my views up so that I'm essentially looking at the same thing. Now, what we're going to do with this is essentially create manual targets. There's other software that I've used in the past where this would be considered a cloud to cloud, matching corresponding points in the cloud together and getting them to fit together. Here, we're making it simple by looking at the actual photograph view of the data. So instead of trying to pick it from a point cloud, I'm doing it from the photograph. My rule here is I want to be half an inch or so uh, in accuracy between those two points because I can tighten those using the cloud to cloud. Half an inch or so gets me close enough to at least get the data registered so that I could then do the cloud to cloud and move on with it from there. Uh, we have a couple of options. We can mark spheres and planes and slabs. I'm gonna do this very simply by marking scan points. I try to avoid edges when I can uh, this case, I just happen to have two uh, that line up pretty well, so I should be able to get those within half an inch or so. But I try to avoid those edges because that creates uh, potential problems. I could miss an edge and end up somewhere off in space. Okay, so sometimes I'll come in from that edge a little way. Same thing here, if I want to do these two, I'll come in from that corner just a hair and use those two positions. So I'm going to go around this site and I'm looking for, uh, usually I try to find about three positions that I can match and that's what I use to, uh, to go on from here. Once you've gotten points in the correct location, you'll see that they, they're automatically labeled with correspondence, and you'll see these matched. So now when I want to do the registration, these are essentially targets. So I've created uh, general use targets. And again, this is a great way, worst case scenario, everything else fails, nothing's working. I can manually create these locations or I can use this to tie in data, say, from a freestyle into a uh, focus scanner data. And what you would do is you would do a registration, uh, place scans, and this time you would tell it that you're doing um, target-based instead of one of the other methods. And then again, you can always tighten it down with the cloud-to-cloud -cloud once you have it set up. 
So once my scans are registered, I've locked the scan manager, I've saved it. My next step is to tell it to create a project point cloud. Here I can eliminate duplicate point data. Essentially what we're doing is we're unifying this data. Instead of dealing with seven individual scans, we're creating one cloud of data uh, that's easier for the software to process and it allows me to do some other things through scene, uh, including eliminating any duplicate points, homogenizing the density, and applying the color balance. Uh, if you scan from two different positions, have two different lighting conditions where my points overlap, you're going to have different shades of color, so we can balance that color out in those overlapping areas. We hit OK, and then we let it process. When the project point cloud is created, we get a report saying that it has been created and the total time taken to create the point cloud. Now I can go in and look at a 3D view of all of the point cloud data together. One of the reasons for doing this is that I can now begin utilizing clipping boxes. With a clipping box on, I can rotate the box. And I can even change the uh, position of the box, clipping out data that's unnecessary or undesired at this point. The clipping box is also a way for me to look at the data and determine how close we are tied. Usually, usually I'll do that prior to uh, completing the registration as a way to uh, take a cross section through the data to begin looking at how well this information tied.